Yeah. Your, your little, your little love. Let's see here. Let me see it here. Yeah, yeah, I'm moving. Is that better? That's better. How did I? That's good for you. Yep. Yep. <laughs> That's a little better. So yeah, I uh, you know I appreciate you you know do, uh, doing this you know uh, it, yeah, yeah. it it it's kind of amazing just how events as kids you know here we're, we're we're only like three or four years old uh, when we moved to 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 Newport probably about two years old uh, uh, I was born yeah, more like three. Uh-huh. And uh you know, we, we, we moved from Pasadena and, and you're you're the first person, you know, that basically, you know, that, that we met, your your family. <laughs> and and I lived across the street. Yeah, exactly, literally across the street. And I I kind of re remember back then. You know, you know, now I, I have feelings, you know, it was kind of how, I don't, how do I put it? Uh, our, our neighborhood still at that time was somewhat remote in, in terms, we still had wildlife around it. You know, you know granted- uh, Yeah, we did. In fact, we didn't even have houses behind us when we moved in. Yeah, right, right, right. We were still starting to build them. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> so, so and, and I kind of remember as a kid, you know, almost like that, I, I couldn't pinpoint it back now. It was kind of like an eerie feeling in in terms of being in nature. You know, you know nature has a feeling of all of its own. You know, I, I imagine you know that the feelings that we had back then and the feeling of Newport Beach, you know, in our neighborhood presently, it would be the difference mm -hmm. between the difference between night and day. Oh, sure. Even, you know, like going to. Uh, you know the the eucalyptus trees, you know, in the back bay where where Carter Robinson. One of my favorite had... hangouts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and 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 for 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 me, you know, and 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 for you, it, it, you know, back then we didn't have the words to to describe serenity, that the feeling. Of... Well, we were living it. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Right, we were we were in the midst of it. <laughs> exactly. So I I, I kind of wanted to go over just what what happened to 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 the back bay. I I'm, I'm I don't I think we had it by probably three or four years. It was pretty much untouched. You know, like like Dover Shores didn't exist. Remember, we we, we had to. It was off limits, but we did it anyway. We we climbed down the cliffs. You remember that? Uh, For sure. Uh, sure. Yeah. I remember, you know, because the um, the drainage ditch and stuff, that was a, a big thing when they put that in. Yeah, 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 exactly. You know, because as I recall, we used to climb down the hill. We would walk out to like virtually where the end of Polaris, your favorite skateboard hill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Crazy suicide Fletchers. But, um, that's where that drain line, that drain pipe, entered into the, the bay there. And I remember it was this huge concrete pipe, you know. But the, uh, the I remember the hillside was all kind of washed away uh, right, right about there. But there was a path that went down to the water. And at low tide, I remember my mom taking this down there. I'm sure you were probably maybe on one of those excursions, but you know, they would they would go down there and lie on the beach and then just let us roll up, up and down you know, at, underneath all those that uh, we called them cliffs, but it was actually it was probably more of a cliff then, but mm -hmm, yeah. uh, you know, all the rocks and all the octopus and stuff underneath the rocks when you pick them up and yeah, there's all sorts of cool things you know the rabbits and and i'm sure there were coyotes out there but yeah, the coyotes, yeah. Yeah. Any of those, but mm -hmm. uh, you know i saw them in early morning and stuff 
But yeah, and then we'd have our little wards out there. We'd make our forts and stuff out of tumbleweeds and all sorts of weird stuff. Mm -hmm. Good times. And I was that kind of amazed you. I never knew Dana Robinson's parents were involved uh, in that. That was, you know, that I didn't either. You know, you go to school and yeah, you, know, you don't you don't really care what your parents do. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, you know, I was friends of parents. I mean, of of, of Dana, and uh, you know, after school, a lot of times I I, I would go to her house for. You know, I think it was in fifth fifth grade. It was. You know, me, uh, Rhonda Lotes. You remember Rhonda Lotes? You know, yeah. Carrie, Carrie Dale. Her dad was that and, teacher. And, and Pinklevic, uh, what was his name? Uh, Carrie. Carrie uh, Pinklevic. Yeah, Carrie Pinklevic. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and, and, and I met, you know, uh, Dana's mom a few times. But I, yeah, yeah it, it was, it, and, it, it, you know, the more I do research, you know, on, on this book, the, the more I'm kind of blown away by, the um, you know you know first they got involved selfishly you know and and uh, uh Frank Robinson even admits that he says yeah uh, <laughs> when I first got started I wanted my my family to go to the beach and there was a no no trespassing sign but but as he got yeah. more involved with it you know and actually you know thirty years of being involved it went from a selfish thing to to seeing how important it is for to save that environment sure and they were going against pretty big fellows right the irvine company the, the orange oh, the company. company yeah 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 they're and not to mention the developers right 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 you know because i didn't develop their own stuff back then you know the dell webs and uh i think it was sturdman was the one that and i can't remember what it is it was Sturgeon was the builder that built our houses. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm sure those guys, you know, they're looking at making money and doing their business. Mm -hmm. you know, there's so many people involved. You know, you've got the asphalt guys for the streets, the graders, the concrete guys, the plumbers. I mean, it, it employs a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, and also opportunities for our parents to buy a new home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, why did you, why did your dad move? I can't remember why you guys moved down. Past we, we moved because uh, my, my mom loved the beach. You know what? One of the well, girls. there you go. Say no more. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and and she wanted you know for 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 her kids you know to to get you know lo, lo, love love the ocean so well, kudos to Joan. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, really. So yeah, yeah. So that was you know quite 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 the thing that that to happen happened back then. And so and and I'm doing all this research and and seeing all these key players. Some of them are are totally under you know well mo most of this is pretty pretty much underground. Uh, I I found uh, uh, a website for for the Daily Pilot where you can put it in a, in a name and and we'll go through sixty years of newspapers and give you stuff that, that's going on. So I'm you put your own name in there. Oh, I can put my own name in there. Yeah, but I'm sure nothing. <laughs> well, well, actually, no. It probably will come up because track and field, you know. That. Oh and yeah, that, exactly. The daily pilot. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and for you, same thing with water polo and swimming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and police records and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so yes, yeah, so, um I I it's kind of amazing how, how we even got involved, you know, with this, but I and but I but I am, you know, and and uh I'm, I, I, I see that, you know, I don't have to, you know, I'm preaching to the choir when, when I talk to you about interconnectedness. Uh, did oh, you see that? Yeah, but, you know, it's, you know, and so we all have our different views on that, but it's the same view, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> did you see that thing I sent you today, that, that song? You know, I honestly, Rick, I fell asleep on the couch last night, and I got to bed, 
And I woke up to my wife taking a shower, who's getting ready to go to work right now, or to church, excuse me. And literally just got my refill on my coffee. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't had time to look. And yeah. my phone is blinking off with messages uh -huh. and stuff. So, well, that, that um, is the one I, I, I sent a video to you. I must have been about a couple hours ago, and I did a wink, wink. You know, I said that I put it on your on your wall. I never put hurt anything in your wall, but this. Oh, is it, is it on Facebook? Yes, on Facebook. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I haven't been on Facebook yet. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so, 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 so I went. You know, when, when I saw that, I said, "Wow, this this is perfect for Mark." And I'll only, you know, <laughs> Mark would understand, and especially when I say "wink, wink," you know that. <laughs> yeah. Next, next. Know what I mean? Know what I mean? Uh, let me see. Let me see if I can just pull it up here real quick on the old phone. And, oh, look at that. Right off the top. Song what preceded creation? Combining energy and matter into the unified field. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Nice picture. Nice picture. Uh -huh. So, um, you know, speaking of that, the, the more of it, well, you know what, so let's stay, let's stay focused on environment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, so, so back then, you know, in the Dover Shores, we, we met a lot of incredible people who, who, who moved, you know, like, a, uh, like the Charleses and Patty Tucker and Joyce Caldwell, uh, as a, you know, Doug Snyder, you know that, that they live down there. So, but so, uh, but, well, I, I guess what I'm driving at is, is that civilization we need balance. You know, we we, we need neighborhoods to to live in, yeah. but also at the same time, we we uh, I I I I call it the Wild West mentality in in terms the we. We don't realize that we're sawing off the branch that we're sitting on. When you when, when we don't have, right. you know, uh, which uh, which oddly you should say that I've done that before. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> How'd you do that? <laughs> uh, over in the trees, the eucalyptus trees. Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> You see a cartoon and you say, Oh, I wonder what and sure enough it uh, does that. So, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, another one of those moments in life where you learn something that you look around and make sure nobody else saw you. Yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> anyway, so that's the, the cat's out of the bag on that one. Yeah. <laughs> So, so, so basically, you know, back then we we had custodians, you know, who who yes, who, who wanted Called parents, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Huh. But but even you know, going back to the Robinsons and the Allen B, you know, and and, and the other people, uh, you know, they they even mortgaged their homes, you know, they 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 put their their their, their life into that, and yeah. Uh, some some somehow uh, uh, you know just from the research it, it's kind of like totally almost forgotten. Uh, it it, yeah. it it's there you know, but it's oh, yeah yes it's it's, it's it behind the scenes. So uh, it sort of moved on. Yeah you know? yeah moved on right. And, and and I guess that's what happens in our society with, with any kind of news event, you know, after a week or two weeks, I mean, even, you know, what comes to war, the, the, the same thing. We, sure. we never learn our lessons. We do the same thing <laughs> over and over and over and over again to the same record or repeating itself. <laughs> well, hold on a second. Can you just give me some more coffee before you leave? Thank you. So yeah, uh, <laughs> I know you you and I are on the, on the same wavelength. You know, there's definitely a, 
a balance. You know, that, that's, that's how we're talking about, is it? Not not to be fanatical one end or 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 the other. You know, there, there's two two ends of the spectrum. And and uh, uh, personally, I I, I think uh, humanity has a tendency to be at the one end of the spectrum and not even realize there is a other end of the spectrum. <laughs> yeah, they just have to turn around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I, I see there's hope, you know, definitely hope. <laughs> sure. But uh, they say it takes a million years for a civilization to wake up. Yeah, I'm, I'm beginning to see, I think that's about true. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're, we're, we're kids on the block and uh, we, we got major lessons to learn. <laughs> That's true. That's a good way of putting it, Rick. That's a good way of putting it. <laughs> some, some kids live on different blocks, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So so that's about all I, I, I want. I want to keep it kind of, you know, simple and short to, uh, uh, sure. today. Uh, just wanted to get, get your viewpoints, you know, about, uh, uh, back then. Uh, for 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 some reason, your your house had had more wildlife than than ours did. And it's kind of um, well, we had a different kind of yard set up. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you you had grass. You know, I mean, I, I remember. You know, I mean, we we all started with a blank slate. I think the only thing that came with the house was like a concrete pad, or in your case, the steps up or whatever to the back door. Yeah, right, right, yeah. And and your front porch, and that was it. They didn't have little sidewalks like going up to it. They didn't have, you know, the path going down the side of the house to get to the back door, you know, all that stuff you had to put in. Mm -hmm. So, um. You know, I mean, I think my dad put a lot of that in himself. Uh, I know in the backyard, um, he helped with, he had friends. <laughs> you know, he was kind of in that business, you know, so yeah. he had friends that would come in and help him. And the big thing for us was the shuffleboard court. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I remember that. You know, I mean, because that kind of concrete, it's a different kind of concrete, and it's a different kind of finish. You know, it's a very, very smooth finish. And, um, you know, it lets those little pucks slide down there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and he did lots of things that way. But then we had two side yards. You know, we always seemed to have a dog. So they had to go someplace. You guys had big dogs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, they, we had big grass and stuff. And, and yeah, but, the, you know, there was more wildlife around. Yeah, the wildlife. Back then. Yeah. Was, I mean, big old frogs and stuff. I mean, for us to go out and catch a frog, it was like no problem. Just go in the backyard and grab one, you know. You know, and, and, and uh, we used to make little frog houses and stuff for, yeah. for the frogs. Because I remember, oh, you know, sitting on, on the grass in your front yard, and we had ten frogs uh, amongst us, and 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 the frogs weren't uh, afraid of humans. No, no, they were just like hopping around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, to have that many frogs, you got to eat something. So. They must have been fat and happy eating whatever was around there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, we did have all sorts of bugs. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, well, a good example would be in high school. I mean, my dad at the hobby shop was the only guy around that sold butterfly nets. Oh, wow. It was like a monopoly. Yeah. You know, I mean, every year, twice a year, Somebody was taking a biology class and they had to go out and that was a big thing. You had to go out and 
do a butterfly. Yeah, that's right, right, that's right, yeah. And, you know, <laughs> because we had so much wildlife, as you call it, you know, the fields were full of different kinds of flowers and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Which attracted different types of butterflies. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, we were pretty lucky. I mean, bugs you, you don't see anymore. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, kind of crazy, you know, and stink bugs, remember stink bugs everywhere. And, 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 um, I remember on during summer we get what are those not 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 lightning, but they're red bugs, real small. Yeah, you know, we've got thousands of them in a row. Oh, the little, little ladybugs. The ladybugs, right? Yeah. Yeah, they they just swarm, you know. Mm -hmm. But those are good for eating all the little bugs on the plants. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Huh. Well, when we first moved in, the fields. Uh, on the other side of the eucalyptus trees is because we had there was eucalyptus trees I believe that went down Highland Drive at one time because all that all that acreage if you look at old aerial shots they had the eucalyptus trees which were windbreaks um, and they you know they grew green beans out there and um, what else did they grow there was beans and well the beets. Remember the beet factory, the sugar beet factory up off of Dyer, and uh, oh, God, they got, real, got oh, real stinky when they you know they kick those whatever they did they processed those sugar beets, and man it was one stinky oh, place. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Well I forgot. You know, you, and and to get fresh vegetables it's like you had to drive to like the Santa Ana or the Mexicans had their own little vegetables. Actually, not even the Mexicans, it was the Japanese that had their vegetable stands. And that's where that's where you went to get vegetables and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it was uh, but I like the Japanese. They've been farming a lot of that stuff for, for many, many years. Yeah. You know, my dad went to school with my parents, went to school with all those guys, you know. Oh, wow. Wow. Uh -huh. And it was really kind of sad because there's still a few of them around. You know, when the war broke out, I mean, they were, uh, you know, it was one of those things where they wanted to join and they wouldn't take them, you know. So, wow. uh, you know, it was crazy times back then, but. Um, I remember the Buffalo I mean, I Farm. Got, well, Buffalo Ranch, yeah. Buffalo Ranch, yeah, Buffalo Ranch, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was that was great. You get Buffalo Burgers, Big Bob Buffalo Burgers or whatever. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> well, that all those buffalo I sent over to Catalina mm -hmm. when they had to, you know, the big evil housing track people came in. And this would be a nice place to build a house or a high school or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, so buffalo ranch. But what it comes down to, you know, the, imagine having a world. Let, let, let's see. If ever, everyone was in sync. Everyone was in, was in harmony and and felt the interconnectedness. Don't I, I truly believe that the world would change for the better? You, you have, think? Yeah, yeah. Have everybody on the same wavelength. Uh -huh. I think they call that. I and, think they and call even, that. You, know, you can have different flowers, right? You know, the flowers are on the same. Oh, wavelength. sure, right. The right. on the same wavelength. You know, they're, they're all That's different, true. distinct. We don't want everyone to be a Richard Fletcher or Mark McClellan. Oh, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. But the one. We get bored. <laughs> yeah, but the one is incredible, right? <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. Good point. So, so, so that's hey, you can only you, you can only stare at yourself so long before you get like yeah. I'm lonesome. <laughs> right. we, we need that interaction. Uh -huh. So yeah, uh, I I don't I don't know. Well, I do know how I got involved. That was kind of interesting. Uh, you know, it's because this is like sixty years later. You know. And, uh, yeah. Well, a little more than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, it is a little bit more than that, right? Yeah. You know what I feel really uh, fortunate about um, 
and I know that uh, you probably feel the same way. I feel very fortunate that um, I can remember back. You know, I mean, we had good times. We were like three, three and a half, you know, and we can remember that. Yeah, yeah. It was just, it was good times. You know, I mean, it was. You know, you had all these kids on the block, you know, all the girls and all the guys. I mean, the Buell sisters down the street. My sister used to hang out with them all the time. And, you know, there was all, plenty of Pam yeah, Fredericks who lived down. around the corner. Yeah. You know, I mean, and then Carter, you know, he had two sisters. You know, they, they, started, they started got into the groove a little late, you know. <laughs> they were definitely the newcomers and they talked funny. Oh, that's right. Oklahoma. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> In Oklahoma, they had that accent. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Scotty Adams. Mm -hmm. know, she's up in there. Remember Jan? Of course you did. Yeah. Remember Jan Fitzgerald? How can you, how can you forget Jan? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the dairy fields lived next door to us because the house was the house for St. Andrews. That was the, the new, I guess you call it parish house or yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You know, I mean, if you were the, if you were the uh, minister for the church at uh, Presbyterian, you know, yeah, mm -hmm. that was the house. Yeah. So the dairy fields lived there. And uh, and then um, I think there was there was somebody before the Darien Fields. I can't remember who it was, but uh, yeah, that was uh, that was kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> you know, if they got a new job someplace else, you know, oh, you got new neighbors coming in. Yeah, yeah. Right, <laughs> right, right. yeah. <laughs> And then I think the church finally says, you know, we could sell this house for a profit and put it into the church. Mm -hmm. right. I'm sure that's the way that happened. Because whoever's living there now, well, I know who's living there, but no, <laughs> they, they don't have anything to do with that church. That's for sure. Well, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, good. Oh, and it was the Andrews sisters who lived on the corner for Craig Elliker. Oh, lived, yeah, lived. yeah, 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 right, right. There were three daughters, there were three girls that lived there, the Andrews. And mm -hmm. then, of course, um, the guy that lived next to you. Rick Mayer. On the corner where Rick Mayer grew up. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, there was always that. We always thought he was Superman or I forget what that thing was, but I guess the guy committed suicide or something. The parents kept it all hush-hush. But um, then, you know, Rick Mayer and his family show up. So um, what else? Who else down the down the block? We have Mark oh. Blackburn, the, the Robinson. Oh, yeah. Mark Blackburn, of course. Yeah. And, and uh, Gary and Jeff Robertson. Yeah. Carol Badham and her sisters. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the uh, Carter, the Carter, the Carter boys used to live behind you, didn't they? Oh, the Carter boy. Uh, oh, the Fultons. Well, the Fultons, but who was before the Fultons? Oh, Those three sons, and I think I don't even know if they had a mother, but they were kind of the obnoxious. The older son was pretty, pretty cool. He was too old to be messing around with little kids, I guess, but. But uh, yeah, they were kind of like mean to us. And, and, and what was their last name? I believe it was Carter. Carter. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No. Huh. I don't. I don't remember them. Yeah. Well, I remember because I ran my bicycle right in the back of their car. Not my bicycle. It was, it was Carter Robinson's bicycle that his parents got him. He. <laughs> He actually named the bicycle Paisley Shitbag. Oh god. I don't know why he did, but but it, anyways, it was it was like you guys, you guys had nice bicycles, you know, back from France or whatever it was. Oh, oh the Raleigh. Yeah. 
the Raleigh's, right? That, that was English then, right? Yeah, yeah, England, right, right, yeah, yeah. And um, not practical riding around the neighborhood, so to speak. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. When, when we were all riding the trails of the, <laughs> the the Netherlands outside, you guys were stuck on 10 speeds. And I was like, ah, <laughs> I, <laughs> <didn't ever bite. laughs> I can't go where these guys are going. Anyways, we were doing uh, races around the block to see who somebody had somebody's stopwatch. The kind you had to wind up, of course, you know. And uh, somebody grabbed somebody's dad's stopwatch. And we would, we would race around the block. Uh, like we're going eat that that block, your block, mm -hmm. and uh, and then you know do time trials, you know, see if you go the fastest. And I remember zipping around the corner, and uh, something got in my eye, and I went to rub it, and I closed my other eye, and I ran right into the back of Mister Carter's. I think he had like a a new MG sports car convertible. And I smacked into the back end of that thing, and I was like, you know. And I look up, and the bike's all kind of bent, and on the front wheel or something like that. And I looked down at my leg, and I got this big hole in my leg. My leg actually hit the back of the car and went into the exhaust pipe. Ooh. And I still got a nice little uh, scar on my leg from from mm -hmm. that. Of course. I was a little kid. I looked down. It looked like it looked like half of my leg was sitting there, you know, wide open. Yeah. So I'm freaking out, crying. And I can remember Mr. Carter coming down again. How in the hell did you do it? You know, screaming and what are you running into my car for? You know, and he's jumping up and down. And then he sees me and he goes, "Oh, geez." And so he goes, "Here's that McClellan boy," you know. And so he's kind of mad, but at the same time, he's got to help me, you know. And so I remember him picking me up and sort of trotting around the corner to my dad's, my parents' house, you know. And it's like, ah, right, 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 right. my dad, like, you know, opens the door. What do you want? Oh, geez, what happened here? And he goes, oh, you ran in the back, you know. By this time, you're you're just thinking, oh, I'm going to die, you know. And it's <laughs> off to uh, Dr. Chung, who we used to uh, go to on 18th Street. 18th and Santa Ana, I think it was. Anyways, he worked out of his house, and he was our family doctor for many years. But uh, took me in there, and I had to get stitches. You know, oh God, I thought I was going to die. I bet my parents must still love that one. I was just, <laughs> but I got a nice star out of the deal. <laughs> Not question. How how long did it take you to go around the block? Like, we would remember that. Yeah. You know, it was probably like two minutes or something, you know. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think you had to rewind that stopwatch. <laughs> I, I wonder how, how far that is. Well, that's a good case. You know, I just might find that out for you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like to find that out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We go over there and walk it. <laughs> I used to... In sixth grade, my my dad gave there we me go. Uh, this this almost like a, a he he did the drawings and he said he learned these uh, what what when he was in uh, the air force and they were all yoga draw drawings. You oh, know? Really? So, and and I didn't know at that time they were they were yoga drawings until oh what fifty years later. You know, my, my dad <laughs> says, oh yeah, those weren't those. Weren't you know from the Air Force? I took were they were they like Japanese drawings? Yeah, yeah, kind of. It, it was a handmade drawings at, with, with pencil, and so they they had the various po. He had about ten different postures, and and he told right. me he took a yoga class in 1960 at, at USC when he was going to USC. Oh, so, wow. And I and 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 I say, well, Dad, how come you didn't tell me? He says, well, I, you know, I, I didn't think you'd be interested in yoga or meditation at all. I think you'd be more interested in the Air Force if I told you from the Air Force. I said, <laughs> well, well, <laughs> Dad, I, I think it's I think it's the reverse. <laughs> so, so I I I, I kind of chuckled at that, on that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's great. That's great.
Oh. I think your dad died. He died in uh, 97. 97. Wow. Wow. I always liked your dad. He was great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he taught me a lot about the stock market. Oh, he, he taught you about the stock market? Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. Wow. I didn't know. Yeah. You know, at that time, unfortunately, I wasn't interested at all. I am. I yeah. Am, no, I am now. Yeah, but. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I, I, for, I forget what. I think my grandfather. Gave all of his grandchildren, I don't know, two hundred dollars or something like that. And um, and of course, you know, you're thinking, oh God, what kind of a new bike can I buy? I always wanted to get a radio or you know a stereo or you know you you always had all these. Oh no, no, no you can't touch it. And it's like what? What's the sense of having two hundred bucks that you can't touch? It? No, that you have to let it earn interest. You know, you need to. You need to build it. This is this is an opportunity for you to make more money with this money. And of course, it was just zoom, zoom, zoom right over your head, you know. Yeah. And um, and I, I was probably I would say probably twelve, maybe. You know when this happened, and um. So, you know, my dad said, well, you need to invest your money. You know, you can invest it in the stock market or you can invest it in real estate. You can, you know, well, how do I put $200 and buy a house? Well, you can't. You guys start small, think big, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, I go, why don't you go over and ask Jack Fletcher? He's a stockbroker. Or either, I forget what he did, but was he a stockbroker? There he was, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And he could tell you about stocks. In fact, he could probably tell you about everything about money, you know. So he goes, "Why don't you call him and set up an appointment?" And that was that was my dad getting me to feel comfortable on asking another older person for advice. Yeah, well, you know. Well. And, and it was really, I mean, I, I learned a lot about the stock market and how it works, but I learned, I think, probably more about how you go over and address someone. I mean, we grew up with manners, boy. You know, if you didn't have manners, <laughs> you learned the hard way. <laughs> right, 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 right. You know, you're going to be picking a dog poop for the next four years, you know, I mean, it's like, well, you, know, you sort of. You know, we, we all had our own disciplines that, um, you know, and yeah. you guys sort of, you got screwed because both of you guys probably got it at the same time. Rick, you did it, you did it. You did it. Okay, get it. You know, so, <laughs> you know how that goes. But, um, but it really taught me more, and I think back about that now, on, you know, how to feel comfortable around an adult, how to feel comfortable around somebody else who's not you know, I know who your dad was. He was a friendly guy. You know, we got along great. But at the same time, I'm asking him for, you know, fatherly advice, but it's not real good advice. He just happened to be your dad, you know. And he had, I was so impressed. He had, you know, these books, big ledgers, I guess you would call them. And I remember sitting on the floor in your living room. And your mom was like reading the book or something like that. And she sort of rolled her eyes and went into another room, you know, probably the family room or whatever to read her book. She was always reading, as I recall. Mm -hmm. And um, he started laying these books out. He opens them up, going, well, and then he pulls the page, and the pages are all folded together. And it's just, he starts pulling this page out. It goes all the way across the floor. And it's the stock market, and he's showing, you know, the ups and downs and, you know, how he recorded all this stuff himself. I mean, you couldn't just look it up. We didn't have computers, you know, and that's, you know, he could, sh he would have the stock market, but he also did it with stocks that 
he was invested in or stocks that he was interested in. So we could actually show people over time, you know, what the stock is doing. So you could see it going up or if it was going down, you know, and it, it well, you know, there's a good time to buy right here because they just came out with a new something or other and the stock's going to go back. I mean, that's that was the kind of stuff that he did. But I was just like fascinated with it. And so he was telling me, well, okay, so you got $200. Well, why don't you even invest $100 in this stock and $100 in this stock, you know, or a bond, or, you know, he didn't even get into all that stuff because that was just, I could see, I could see the numbers this way. But, he, you know, he, he could, you could buy this one here for 50 cents. You know, and you know, you got a hundred dollars. Gosh, you can get two hundred shares there. And in a year, it might be a dollar twenty-five. Then you would make and you tell me, you know, it's like, oh, you know, that was all starting to come yeah. oh, well. clear how you could make this money. And, it, and then he told me about splits. When it gets to a certain point, then it splits. I go, what what well they, they actually cut the stock in half. I go, well, why would well, why would they do that? Well, actually, so you had uh, 200 shares. Now you have 400 shares. What? Yeah. And it brings the price back down. Then it goes back up. Then it splits again. And then you have 800 shares. You know, it's just over time, if you have a good stock and it keeps playing, you know, it's, and that, that, like, oh, that nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you just got to be patient. You just got to be able to do it, forget about it, look at it, but don't look at it every hour, don't look at it every day, you know. But that's his job, he, you know, call you up, no, we need to sell this, you know. And it, it's, but, but I don't want to sell it, it's making money. Yeah, well, it's going to take a big dump here real quick. Yeah. You know, that's the kind of stuff that he did. But, um, you know, I'm like, yeah. the research back then was, it's not what you know, it's who you know. So, you know, and, and all the, God, all the stuff your dad must have had to do every day to stay on top of everything. You know, and then all your clients, you know, it's like, oh, yeah. wow. oh, right. A little big impression on me. And, and he was very, very patient and, you know, chuckling a little bit here and there. But he would just show me all these different things. And I, I can't remember. I think somebody else went with me. Went with Kevin Charles or something like that. I can't remember. But uh, either way, I mean, I was focused on it. And that was, uh, that made a big. I never get that um, story. You know, well, Probably lots of stories you have in there. Yeah, yeah, no, no, that's true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, do, do you remember what you invested in? I really don't. I I forget. I you know, um, he was saying things like, uh, you know, invest in things that you know. You know, like. Uh, like Coca Cola. Uh, like, yeah. Thrifty ice cream or something like that. You know, what I mean. You know, thrifty ice cream. You like it, you know. It's really good ice cream, and he says. But then you have to look. You have to do your research. Find it. And he taught me how to find it in the newspaper. And you know what? All those other little numbers behind it. Man. He says, just watch something. Watch it for like a month. You know, you make your own chart. And uh, that really, really helped me a lot. But I think. One of the things I first invested in was Santa Anita. And it wasn't so much the racetrack. I mean, Santa Anita, the corporation or whatever, you know, they had the racetrack, but they were taking all that money and reinvesting it into properties and, the, you know, all this other stuff. And the stock yeah. did really, really well. And it had a nice dividend. So, you know, I think they did that. And it was one of the things you just sort of forget about it. And then I remember my dad going, What are you going to do with that Santa Anita stock? You know, go, geez, I don't know. I mean, you haven't even looked at it. Well, yeah, you might want to look at it. You know, and I think I bought it at like, you know, 
four or five dollars. It was up to like eighteen or something like that. Oh wow, wow. <laughs> so I was like, uh, wow. He goes, yeah. He goes, you can sell half of it and invest it in something else. Sell all of it, you know. So and, the, and that was when it was, and that's when he had to have a stockbroker. Yeah, right. So. And every time you use a sock broker, well, you got to get him that cut, you know. And now, today, everything is just electronic. So you can buy and sell all day long. And, and uh, you know, there isn't anybody looking over it. It, it, it depends, you know. There's still lots of people with stock brokers. I mean, Phyllis and I, we have, um, we have a, financial advisor, a fiduciary now, which makes so much more sense, you know. Mm -hmm. And they basically tell you, well, we're gonna take this money and we're gonna diversify. And it's it's diversified. And their whole image is they you know, of course they've been doing this research for forever. And so you diversify in a bunch of stuff where this stuff's going down, this stuff's going up, and it's all going like this. You know, you're not going to get a 15% return on your money. I mean, we're looking for something, you know, on that solid seven, six and a half, eight, you know, just right, right, right. Gradually going up. Because it, it does, it all adds up at the end. You know, this stuff, this this part of the market's losing money, but in return, you know, what goes up comes down. So it, it just moves to another section of the market. You know, so anyways, I know some about that. Well, that has a story I never had never never heard. You know, I remember I. I I, n- I never know you. Maybe I did know about back then that you met m- with my dad, and he he was. Yeah, like, I mean, and, and you probably were told to go in the other room, or you know, go play with your whatever you know, Hardy Boy books or whatever you know. Right. You know, and you guys are big Hardy Boy guys, weren't you? Yeah, then we were Hardy Boys. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I read I every every one. Yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> and 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 I, I bet you my, my dad was. Uh, Overjoyed with was you know ha- having his son's friends who who was interested, you know because yeah I, you know, uh, yeah yeah was it was uh, you know I didn't look at it that way but yeah you know I would I suppose I'd be kind of you know have a good feeling in my heart for something like that mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I, I you know I've had kids being lucky enough. Don't ask me how I got started in this. I opened my big mouth and said, yeah, I'll do it. Um, Boy Scouts, you know, when Scott was little, I mean, we were Cub Scouts. You know, I got pictures of us on the battleship over there in Long Beach. Oh, yeah, 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 right, right. I mean, everybody was in scouting, you know. it's uh, Those are classic pictures. I I, I know I sent that one to you when. Yeah, you did. uh, And Stuart Whedon and Carter Warner Weiss is in there, you know. Right, right. And it's uh, all the older kids, you know, behind us and stuff. But you you, you mentioned that John, one of of us had a jacket on. You you mentioned. Right. Yeah, well, you both had jackets on. We both had jackets, okay. (laughs) (laughs) And it was like summer, and you're like, oh, you know. (laughs) Uh-huh. Look, your special jackets you got for Christmas or your birthday or something. You know, and then you used to celebrate you guys' birthday in, in June. Right, right, right. June 24th, yeah, because you got ripped and chipped because of your birthday, you know. It was my birthday present and my Christmas present. You know, which totally made sense. Who, who lived next door to the Deemers? You know, they, 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 were, they were older than us, about three or four years. Was it Pals? Uh, the Pals. Yeah. Well, well, the Pals one one day. This was in winter. And then the Usens, the Usens used to live. Uh, oh yeah, next Nikki Ball. Yeah. Uh-huh. Eric, well, and, well, Eric well, and the, Tina. The Pals, when I was must have been about ten years old, he says, "You know, you and your brother, you're you're kind of unique 
because he said, during summer, you would wear long pants. And during winter, you wore shorts. <laughs> yeah, you guys were like that. Uh, yeah. That was kind of weird. Yeah. So he, he said, well, that was, that was quite fascinating. I, I'll, I'll never forget that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the owls. Uh, oh, and Dr. Pritchard lived next door to Kevin. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. He had that pool. The pool was in the front yard, which we thought was kind of unique. Mm -hmm. You know, on the other side of the gate was the pool. You know, it was kind of weird. He was a pretty nice guy. And who can forget Wally Campbell? Oh, yeah. Wally. You know, the yeah. instigator of, like, the doo band, you know? I mean, he had that get all the guys in the neighborhood. I didn't know how many parents in the neighborhood played trombone and trumpets and banjos and, you know, it, he had his they would get on the back, I forget who's got the flatbed truck. And they'd go around the neighborhood at Christmas time or whatever. Oh, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Gosh, you know. I mean, we we grew up in a very unique neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember telling people stories about our neighborhoods and the things that we used to do. The ROG Club, you know, the, the airplanes would. Fly the model oh, planes oh, and you yeah. know, yeah, uh, run off ground. ROG, the ROG club, I think it was mm -hmm. run off ground. That was the name of the airplane. Of course, who would sell those? My dad, yeah, yeah, yeah right. you know, and uh, they, you know, we just they would have a blast and then send us out to go find where the airplane landed in some guy's backyard and retrieve it and bring it back, you know, right. But it was, you know, we didn't have all the trees back then because everything was still growing. Right, 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 right. You know, you, back then you didn't have a crane come in and stick in a, you know, five foot box tree that's already like 30 feet tall, stick hmm. in your backyard. You know, I mean, you, you planted the little thing you got at the nursery and, and uh, that was that. And who who worked for your dad for a while? There, there was one of was it Ronnie Walker? Oh, the young blood. I okay. think it was John. It was John Youngblood, and um, I would say John and Bob. Mm -hmm. But one was a race car driver. Wow. Okay. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, and the other one I forget. He ended up. Uh, yeah, Youngblood. He used to race. I think it was his. John Youngblood, but they were like only a year apart, well, I think. And, and they lived with their old, mom. I guess I Gordon Duane, yeah, you remember your your dad's friend. They, they, they became friends, you know, Gordy surfboards. Oh yeah, Gordy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And he met Gordy simply through the hobby shop. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, Gordy would come in there and. What do you do? Oh, I make surfboards. Oh, well, my kids are like, well, bring them on down, you know. Yeah. Right, right. And little did we know, a nine-two Gordy that weighed, you know, how much did those things weigh? Oh, they were probably, what, you know, 40, I think 40 pounds. We, we could barely get our arms around. Yeah, right. You know? And yeah. you had to balance it just just right, you know. And, and we'd walk those things down Polaris to get into the water. Yeah, right, right. And then paddle with our lunches all the way over to a little Corona. Oh. Or not a little Corona, but China Cove. Yeah, right. Wow, good times. Yeah. So this isn't exactly about what you wanted to talk about, but uh, I guess it's environment. Yeah, you know, yeah. Well, well, th this is all pieces of the puzzle. So, so you, I, I, I believe you don't separate anything. That that's that's what's wrong. I think a lot of times we separate everything from part. Yeah, that's true. So, so th th this is all part part of the of the, of the discussion. You know, all those events that I see, even. You know, of the people that are around in Newport that I didn't know, somehow they're a part of me today. You know, yes. there, there's a subconscious yes. part uh, of humanity 
that 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 we're, we're we're not aware of, but we're a part of. You know, we're 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 a part of humanity. So all all these events are kind of like, uh, you know, crisscrossing, and 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 a lot of times they they fire. I mean, it's like the butterfly effect. Fifty years ago, I'm seeing the events that are, that are happening now, and, and, and even if something as simple as this. Uh, mm -hmm. A couple of days ago, I saw a thing on Vivekananda. He 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 was the very first American. I'm sorry, Indian guru coming to the states. This was in 1890, and wow. and and during that that time, this is you know in, in 1890, he he uh, what was well known uh, amongst uh, the the women in in America. So they 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 had. Like the Theosophical Society, and then they had Christian, you know, science. So they had Barry Baker Eddy involved, where 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 my grandmother's mom was friends with Mary Baker Eddy, and and David wow. Amanda spent time. He spent seven years here in the states, and he spent a lot of time in California in L.A. And and my uh, grand great grandmother lived in in Santa Paula, which was about a, a, an hour away from from LA. Right. Beautiful place. So so I how, how do I say it? So uh, events that happened way about years ago, uh, kind of reverberated inside of me. So yeah, you know, before I didn't think that would could could be possible, you know. Uh, well, but you didn't know. Yeah, I you know, I mean, it's like it was just another person that your great grandmother knew, or whatever. You know, it's just uh, it it didn't have any meaning in your life at the time. Yeah, and but but I think you know with with meditation really helps. How how do I say? Them, the interconnectedness. You know, when you feel interconnected, uh, but we were talking about that signpost all the time, right? You know, right. Now the signposts are always there, but, but do we? They're always there. You just you just gotta open your eyes and see it. Yeah. So, you know? what I would call back then synchronicities or so-called miracles are are they're happening all around us. Yes. Every, every single yes. this this conversation, you know, is is enlightening because you, you you told me a thing about my dad that, that I didn't even know, you know, uh, you know, and, and 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 that's part of wisdom, isn't it? Is that's part of uh, gathering gathering wisdom? Yeah, versus exactly. information. You know, and, you could be sitting right next to me, and I'm learning something that I could possibly change my life. And you would never see it. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. You know, and then, as she was saying, <laughs> not on the same wavelength, but the, or you're on the same wavelength, you're just in a different section of the wavelength. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's something, you know, it's always great talking with you, Rick, because um, they're, I'm constantly growing as you are too, and on on the knowledge and wisdom and 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 I never got into the Sadguru uh, Maharaji, you know. I never got into that. I wasn't into meditation as much as I really, really wanted to get into it. Um, but it just makes more sense to me now. Because I felt like this when I was a little munchkin, you know, I had dreams that, you know, I, if I was to tell people some of my dreams, they'd look at me like I was nuts. But I look back at it, and it's not so much a dream as it was a vision. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right, right. You know, of what, you know, I don't know how much, the, I can't tell you how many moments in my life deja vu has come in and smacked me right in the face. Yeah, yeah. Right, you know, uh, I I remember, like, going up a chairlift and asked 
you know, somebody completely I've never met before sitting next to me and, you know, carrying on this conversation. And I just look at him and just, you know, it's like, whoa, you and I have been here before. Well, what's wrong? You know, I just had a big deja vu, you know, and then end up being good friends with this person. <laughs> you know, I mean, what are the chances? Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know. And, and, but I, I let that go. I mean, there was a point in my life where I, I had deja of this all the time. And it was, well, when you first have something like that happen, you're, you're kind of, uh, what was that? You know, you think you might be going crazy or something, you know, but uh, when it happens and when somebody, I don't know who it was, you know, joking, oh, that's, you're having a deja vu. What's a deja vu? Oh, it's, you know, they, they try to explain it to you, but they're noticing them as being, some people say, well, that was, what that's uh, you were at that moment in life in a different lifetime or you know people trying to explain what deja vu is and um but i don't get those as much anymore because i'm living those <laughs> now a little bit more mm -hmm. so and like you were saying the synchronicity the connectivity you know with nature and stuff and i think about god i did a lot of bad things to nature when i was a kid growing up you know and chopping down limbs on trees, you know, the eucalyptus trees, you know, they hammering two by fours into the side of a tree so we could climb up higher. But there was plenty of wood hanging around from all the buildings, plenty of nails to go around. All you had to do was grab one of your dad's hammers, find little pieces of wood that would, you know, and no, no concept, just pounding a nail into the side of a tree. You know, I, I, you know, I couldn't do that today. Mm -hmm. right. You know, I mean, I go, okay, well, when did I take it? And then to come back years later and see the tree actually growing up around that piece of wood that, you know, he nailed into it. The tree kept going, you know. Might have hurt its feelings, but it was still growing, you know. And it, it, it grew around it. It just, it left it and so it is what it is, and I'm still going up higher. You know, and it's, um, those are little moments in my life that, I, that I've picked up. Um, it's nice being able to talk, you know, people like you and your brother, and, you know, and to many other people I really know that understand that synchronicity. You know, you know, yeah. But, uh, you know, it's, it's the brotherhood of man, you know? I mean, it's like, hey, we are so blessed to be here and be able to see this, you know, but what's to say that that little rose petal doesn't see the same thing, you know? It is the same thing. It is, it, it, it's, we're lucky to have it all sort of dialed in in our little brains and little synopsis and synapses and electrical charges and everybody bouncing off of everybody else and you know, here we are. I mean, your liver is something completely different than your kidney. But somehow, they all got together with this big glob of a, as the Martians would say, a flesh bucket. <laughs> and um, go on your way, you know. It's uh, pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. It's like, um, it's, I'm not afraid of death, you know, because you never die. You just trade places. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know, it's... You go to the, uh, the, the next room in the mansion of life. <laughs> right. All I, I, always used, I always used to say, look at it this way. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so anyways
Thank you for being my friend. Yeah, likewise. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's, uh, I I know we have many friends like this, but uh, uh, you know, there's there's close friends, and then there's close friends. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah. All right. Well, I definitely appreciate this. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm sure. gonna be, be putting this on. In, in that book, you know, I'm 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 in, I'm doing a hopefully a series like a conversation. So so far, to be honest, no one's interested in this. You know, <laughs> I, I have one 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 person I I had Leslie Godfrey asked, you know, did wow did did you write this book when? So I said, well, and then then I responded to her, yeah, I'm I'm writing this, you know, every, every when I finish a chapter. I'm I'm putting it online. I said I, I'm I'm different than than most. First of all, I'm not an author. I'm a researcher. So and right. and and second of all, I like doing things that are different. I've never seen a researcher or an author when they finish a chapter that that they put it online. <laughs> right. Well, I think I think and here's here's something I I'm gonna suggest to you. Um, you're saying, you know, I'm writing this book. I wrote a book yesterday. Well, you wrote a chapter. A chapter, right, right, right. A chapter in the book. The book is the life of Rick Fletcher. You know what I'm saying? So I wouldn't so much to kind of throw the people off. It threw me off a little bit. No, Rick, you're not writing books, you're writing chapters in the book. So it's, you know, the chapter is your life, what you're thinking, yeah. info you do, and you put it out there. Right. So it's it's just the chapter of that big book of yours, and then next day you flip the page. <laughs> yeah, maybe you know that's what I'm saying. Do is I'm not mention books, chapters, because I. Well, chapters. It just it, because yeah. it is. It's a chapter in your life. Yeah. It's a chapter in my life. Right. Right. Certainly not a book in my life. My gosh, we're still writing it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. 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 That's true. Yeah. We're. That still, make, we're does that make a little more sense? Yeah. 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 That. that and I think more people might be, you know, book. What's Rick talking about? He wrote a new book. I mean, it's like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I see what he's doing. Mm -hmm. But uh, and I, I like the way you've condensing it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and and you like the new way with, with the multimedia. You know, the, you, I like that. Yeah, I like that. You know, I like the, the little dragon the, stories the too. Images and the videos and the captions. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. Yeah, it's. Uh, you use an AI on that stuff, or yeah, yeah, oh yeah, I, oh I mean, uh, well, like like for example, you know, all my new songs, you know, which are are my poems. That's all AI driven. Oh wow, that's crazy. So so basically, what I do is I I take my uh, you know a lot of these poems are are thirty years old, so I, I take my poem, I I go to a a site called Suno, and I and I put in the the lyrics. And then from from the lyrics, well, they have almost every genre known to man. Every almost everything known to man. So you put it in there, wow. and we'll give you that. So I mean, for example, psychedelic, you know, or the Almond Brothers style, or a classic rock, or a reggae ballads, gospel, Indian music, Middle Eastern. Uh, let's say ancient Chinese, you know, wisdom. You know, you you, you want to put in the, the the type of instruments that I want it, want to play. Uh, you you want to be slow, you know, the the voices to be slow, methodical. You want acid rock. You want hard rock. You know, it's and, uh, and blues, and, dude. Don't forget the blues. Yeah, that, that, the blues are in there. The blues are in there. You know, it's. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know, and, and for me, you know, this is what I always wanted, you know, because I I don't have the money to to to, to get. I mean, well, sure. You know, so, so 
Yeah, and so so many people are are against it. Uh, you know, it, it's like, uh, it's like in the '60s when electric guitars you know, came out. Uh, Bob Dylan he got booed off stage. You know, and back then they said, "Oh, how dare! What a what an offensive thing! He's playing the electric guitar." And and this is kind of kind of similar to uh, to to well, this. folk sing folk singers didn't do that. Yeah, you know, and he was basically a folk singer. You know, he was the dude. You need to be laying on, sitting on a blanket in the park somewhere and playing. You know, you can't do that with an electric guitar. Yeah, so, right. So, again, I kind of, you know, who his sister really was into Bob Dylan is Ronnie Conrad. Oh, right Ronnie. around the corner. Oh yeah, I remember Ronnie. Yeah. Yeah. And his dad adopted all the kids, and he became a walker, Ronnie Walker. Because his parents, I think, died in a car wreck or airplane or something like that. Oh, well, I, I, didn't, I never knew the, the story behind that. Yeah, yeah and it was Ronnie, who was the youngest, who was a year behind us. And then his brother, Bob. And then, um, what was his sister's name? Was he was the terrible. one uh, who who introduced us to light my fire the, from the doors. I remember right. hearing the BW when it first came out. It came out one of the very first cassettes, you know. The, or, right. Well, it was an eight track. Yeah, eight track. Actually, right, right. actually, it was a four track. Oh, was that okay? A four track. Oh, wow. Oh. It was a four track, and then it went to eight track. Did you, you ever hear from him at all? Was that Ronnie? Yeah. No. I have no idea where he is. Yeah. An amazing gymnast, an amazing athlete. Um, I remember, you know, in, in high school, he was so fast and agile and kind of tough, you know. Um, and the football coaches were just like all over him. And he was just a natural athlete. Um he taught me how to do a backflip off of the diving board, that little pool they had. The side, you know, and he had the smallest pool in the neighborhood. Oh, oh, oh. And um, he taught me how to do a backflip. And, you know, I, I, what did you learn to do this? Oh, I, I just, I just, you know, do it, you know. And he would always try to do something different. And um, I remember when, um, uh, Maury Adams, who was the gymnastics coach, uh, who I didn't know was a golden glove in college. That guy's hands could move faster than anybody I know. Wow. But um, he was the gymnastics coach, and that's I started doing gymnastics. And uh, I remember Ronnie was running. You know, they'd make a football team. Yeah. Were you in football? No, no, I was in cross country no. track. Yeah. Oh, that's right. You were probably yeah. And um, you know, they have you have to run the field. You know, they'd make you run all the way down towards the trees and then across the backside and up around the stadium or whatever. You know, it was it was a long run. And I remember running, running by, and he saw us out there, and Jim Cocus and Tom Newmeyer, we'd be setting up like the rings, you know, we had to set up all this equipment out there every day, uh, you know, lay the pads out and, uh, you know, and we're, they're doing round offs and backhand springs and stuff like that. And Ronnie just like stopped and went, wow, what are you guys doing? And, you know, the, the coaches are way off in the distance, you know, they, those guys couldn't run. Maury Adams would run with you. You know, he'd be there like on your ass, going faster your little turns, you know. But um, he just stopped. You know, putting his feet on the pads and stuff. And um, I remember the strata was looking at him going, hey, hey, what are you doing? You know, and you should be running. He goes, no, I mean, what can you do? And he just stood there and did a backflip. Mm -hmm. And, and Mr. Cattles, Mr. he goes, hey, <laughs> you in football? No, you need to be in gymnastics. Well, what can I do? What can you do? What can I do? What can you do? You know, he was just like, are you getting your natural? So, 
he had to go and he came back around and you know for Ronnie he would just like swing off and and see what else he could do. It was so much fun to him, you know. And you know all you had to do was show him and he could do it. Wow, whoa! And the next thing you know, he never got back in the group. He goes, no, I'm just going to do gymnastics now. Oh man, those football coaches were really pissed off. <laughs> yes, he was like a freshman, and they had eyes on him all the way through. Yeah. You know, four years we got our kid right here. And he just basically gave him the finger and said, "No, that's gymnastics. That's where it's at." You know, mm -hmm. and of course, he never the gymnastics team never had any money. I mean, it. it they were the last team in the high school that got any kind of a nibble of yeah, right, sports right. money, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't have uh, they didn't have football right, right, parents, right. you know, dumping tons of money into new helmets and you know all that stuff. You know, it was uh, not the right everything we had was like kind of used or you yeah. know, but. Um, yeah, he, he he went really far in that. He been, he very excelled exceedingly. He is what we call an all round guy. Wow. He could do he, he could do parallel bars, high bar, vaulting, uh, floor exercise. He could do uh, pummel pummel uh, horse the pummel. Oh, the horse, horse you yeah, know, yeah, with yeah. the handles on it, and you're throwing your legs around, you're moving your oh. hands and stuff. And uh, he was just a natural, just a born, and he loved it, you know. I mean, it was his, he really found his niche. The last I heard, he was like growing vegetarian food or something down in Sanitas or something like that. I, I you know, I, I totally lost track. Yeah, I, I, I do a Google, Google search on him, who knows? He, 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 he was studying eagles for, for, for many years. Mm. Falconry and stuff. Yeah. Yes, yeah. he got he got into that before before um, he left high school. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! And, okay. Uh, and I think you're absolutely right there. He was really really into that. And that he Casey found a little Weaver. hawker. He found a yeah Casey Weaver. Yeah, Casey. Yeah. Friend. Right. Yeah. Wow. I think Casey's living in his old house. Oh really? Okay. Oh wow! Wow. He, oh. he did move up north. I saw him one day, and then I never saw him again. I saw his truck and stuff. So his, his truck's still there. So mm -hmm. I think, you know, because his mom finally passed away or whatever, and, and all of his brothers, I guess, oh, sorry, uh, may yeah. not be alive or whatever, you know. But Yeah, Buff died real young. Yeah, yeah and uh, so he, you know. He didn't want to move down. That's basically he was living up in Oregon or something like that. You know, he's out in the trees and all that. Right. Huh. He didn't. He didn't want to give that up. And I guess I don't believe it. You know, he's got this big four wheel drive truck and everything else. So mm -hmm. he had some property and that. But that was the life. You know, you got freshwater streams and nobody around you. You know, I can live like that. <laughs> right. Right. Huh. But I think I need people too much. I need. I need. I need people. But uh, last I haven't seen him, but the cars keep moving around. So he must be living there. Yeah. Uh, you still in contact with Carter? Okay. Mm -hmm. Carter and I are, we're, we're, we're like this. Oh, wow. Wow. You know, I don't need to see him. He doesn't need to see me. But when we see each other, it's just like where we left, left off. You know? Yeah. Last time I saw him was with Brad Crowell, was in Denmark. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, yeah Brad's up uh, Grass Valley or someplace up there. Grass Valley. You know, I, I wish I knew because I, I lived there for about three or four years. Did you really? Yeah. Randy Oliver lives up there. Uh huh. And Doug lives up. I, I don't know if it's Grass Valley, but it's it's all in that area. Yeah, it's all in Grass Valley, then Nevada City. You know, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's all. Um, yeah, it's beautiful up there. 
Mm -hmm. Randy Oliver is still doing his bee work. So he's still a master bee guy. Oh, wow. Okay. Huh. So he's, he's teaching beekeeper classes. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. And Carter gave me, out of the blue, Carter texts me uh, or emails me, but you need to email this guy. And just left it at that. And I'm looking at it, it's Randy Oliver, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, what the age? So I shot it off to, to Randy. So he used to stay in touch. He was my roommate for a long time. Um, Randy? Yeah, Randy was. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. We were we ran into each other. And um they're like, hey, Randy, you know what's going on, Randy? You know, how's Doug and all that stuff, you know? And, and uh, he goes, oh, yeah, everything's fine. I said, so what are you doing these days? Well, right now I'm looking for a place to live. So I go, yeah, I am too, you know. I mean, God, it's tough, you know, trying to find a place where a guy can live, you know. And it's that you can afford. And of course, you know, back then it was like rent was dirt cheap anyway. You know, if you had to pay $100 a month for an apartment, you were living for one for 85 you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> But um, so we were zipping around. We said, well, maybe we should get a place together. You know, if we pay like 150 for a two-step room, you know, that'd be cool. Mm -hmm. And so we, we just, all right, well, let's go look together. So I remember zipping around in his Volkswagen and run into George Peters. And George was like, uh, hey, what's going on, guys? You know, it's like, oh, you know, Randy didn't know George that much, but and um George Peters lived up um over by where Liz, Liz Priest used to live. Um a Dorothy Lane, or I think it is uh it's off of Mariners or off of Dover Drive, like when we would walk to school. Mm -hmm. Um Liz Priest lived on the corner. Um, Jim Stansbury lived, I think, on Deborah. Sunni Ginley, I think, lived on, on uh, Deborah Lane, and, and they were neighbors. Anyways, so I, George says, um, We're looking for, for a place to rent. He goes, Oh, well, I don't know if you'd be interested, but uh, I know our house that we lived in is up for rent. Where is it? It's on 22nd Street or 33rd Street down by the beach. And uh, you know, Randy and I go, Well, you know, yo, how much they want for it? Uh, well, I guess my dad was paying $225 a month for the house. I go, $225 for a house? Well, how big is the house? He goes, Oh. It's five bedrooms, um, two baths, <laughs> has a, you know, an enclosed back porch, has, you know, two car garage, has, and we're like looking at them, but for 200, you know, that's insane. He goes, well, they're going to tear it down. So we had to move. But when are they tearing it down? I don't know. It's going to be over a year or so. So we, he gave us the number. We called up the realtor and said, well, you know, we're, it's going to get torn down in a little over a year. And we're like, for $225, oh, wow. I'm sure we could get another Ruby in here. So we ended up, George was living with his parents. So, you know, who did we get for a roommate? George. George. Oh, no. So he moved in where his parents' room was. Uh -huh. And then Steve Carney got a hold of him. Okay, yeah. Uh -huh. And so, and then we still had an extra bedroom. And Don Comstock um, got him talked into it, but he was going to go to Europe. And uh, so he, he basically said, well, I'll just pay, you know, my rent or whatever. And he never did, but he was going to be the roommate. And he was going out with this girl, Shauna, uh, that he met. And so he goes off to Europe. Came for like, I don't know, two months worth of rent or something like that. And then Sean had moved in. And we're like, uh, wait a minute, where's John, you know? 
So there's four guys with this girl living, you know, upstairs. And Randy was, anyways, we had the upstairs group, we had the downstairs group. And the kitchen was huge. The kitchen was so huge, it had a, a full dining room in it. They Whoa. left the table. They came with the house. I mean, it was they, they basically built this table in the house. Wow. Whoa. And the stove was like a O'Keefe stove had a had a, a bread warming oven and had two and it was all gas had the had the big griddle on the on the stove with like six burners I mean this thing was huge it's probably a good almost seven feet wide I mean it was wow wow it could feed a lot of people off this thing. And uh, then I had two little rooms in the front, which we called sun rooms, and I had an attic. Oh my gosh! I had an attic, and they, and they had built a, a latch on the roof so you could open up the, the hatch mm -hmm. and get air in up there. And uh, of course, Randy stuck an aquarium in there, and you know, he was all into growing frogs, and he was in biology at that time. Cockroaches were a specialty, and the house did have lots of cockroaches, mm. but it didn't bother us. Anyway, Shana moves in, and we're like going, wait a minute. Okay. So once in Europe, we get the phone call. He's in a hospice or whatever, you know, hanging out. Look up. Somebody grabbed all of his money, his backpack, everything. So he's, he's in Europe someplace. I have no idea where he was. And he's just basically got the shirt on his back and his shoes. <laughs> and so, oh, hey, can you guys send us money? It's like, uh, dude, we are so poor. How are we going to send you money? You need to get all your friends. Oh, my parents, uh, you know, uh, I forget how he got back, but he, he got back somehow. But he didn't get back for a long time. He was wow. stuck over there for a long time. I think he had to get a job and all sorts of stuff. So we're thinking, what do we do with Shana? So we figured, well, we'll let you stay, but we're not going to charge you any rent. So three, what was that? $225, I think it was. Split four ways. I mean, what's that? 50, 60 bucks a month or whatever. It was, it was a crazy amount of money, you know, for your rent. Yeah. And uh, we just told her, no, you won't pay any rent. And she goes, why is that? Well, if things don't work out, that way we can kick you out. You know, no, no sweat off. And she ended up being a great asset to the house. And, uh -huh. yeah. You know, her friends would come down. We, you know, it, it was, it was one of those synchronicity things where yeah. everything, yeah. <laughs> we met a whole new group of people, you know, through her. And Randy ended up marrying one of them, you know. Oh, I mean, it was oh wow, wow, crazy, okay. you know. He ended up marrying Sherry and and then Marsha Brand, and uh, I mean, and I mean, it, it, the fingers like we were talking about, you know, that it's amazing how many people affect your life that you had no idea were going to be there, mm -hmm. you know, and it was. What a great experience. And it was virtually a year later we all had to move out. You yeah. Know? But we knew that. You know? Yes. Yeah, right. We were right. basically living in a house looking for another place to live. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, we had some great parties down there. And the, and there there was policemen that lived across the street. And so like the motorcycle cops would always pull, it was a one-way street. They'd always pull down the street. And, uh, you know, park out in front of this, this guy's house. And of course, he's out there drinking a beer with his feet up. You know, he's off. And, and so they'd hang out and have lunch. And then it, it, so the cops were always across the street. And, of course, we were all smoking pot all the time, you know. Yeah. Okay. And uh, it, was, it was just one of those cool neighborhoods where everybody got along. Nobody cared what you did. You stay out of your, everybody's business, you know. Uh -huh. So we have like big block parties and stuff, and uh, yeah, it was fun. 
just went. Of course, the summertime, you got all the girls and stuff walking up and down the street. People, everybody's looking for a parking place. Parking was uh, oh, yeah, yeah. well, kind of hard, kind of hard. And George, this is a great story. I don't know if I ever told you this one. Randy, George was giving Randy a bunch of grief about something one day. And it was, he used to give George grief because he was such a slob. And, you know, he he fast food guy, and he had this old Impala, and he just threw the wrappers, you know, French fry bag, you know, everything went in the backseat. And it was just disgusting. You know, I mean, the upholstery is like, the car is ruined, you know, we called it La Bamba. You know, it was like an old, I forget, it was a Chevy something. But Randy, uh, George is going to paint his car, so he put it in the garage, and he gets the cans and spray paint. He starts, you know, the paint's like dripping down the sides of the car and stuff, and metallic blue or something like that. It was just, just gross. So Randy and I, you know, he's just giving George a bunch of grief. So Randy goes, one of his jobs at a lab at UCI was he would start uh, insects for classes to study. You're going to study fruit flies. Well, like a little teaspoon, little teaspoon of fruit fly larvae. You know, they're all inert, no sex life. They won't spread. They just grow up, die, or get eaten. So a little teaspoon of larvae can produce tens of thousands of flies, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he opens up the door, takes a little spoonful of fly larvae, throws it in the back seat, perfect warm incubator, shuts the doors, rolls the windows up. George is, you know, in his room for the weekend because he just, like, watch TV. His girlfriend, who's a good friend of mine now, she's a retired Superior Court judge. Oh, <laughs> oh I got so much dirt on Kim. Um, but anyways, that's a different story. And so George goes to get into his car and he can't see in his car. He's going, what, what, what's going on here? The flies, they just Covered the whole inside of the car. Oh my gosh. And he's like, what the H? It looked like somebody spray painted his car from the inside. Uh -huh. They started looking at it, and they're all moving. He's like, oh my God. It was one of the best jokes. You know, how do you get rid of all those things? You know, like Rita goes, oh, they'll die in a day or two. Oh, God. So, you open up the windows, but you're never going to get rid of all. You know? So George had to clean up the back of his car to get rid of his flies. It yeah. was kind of, you know, one of those little stories. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of fun stuff like that. Oh, God. Any more questions for me? What's going on tomorrow? Uh, we didn't really talk too much about our environment around the... Uh, What's going on? Yeah, what did you say? I didn't get. I didn't hear that. We didn't really talk too much about the environment in our backyard. Yeah. Besides, well, besides the little frog houses and right, lizards. Right, yeah. Yeah. I think. I think we pretty much we got the the gist. You know, we we when we moved right. there, there was pristine. You know, and then by that. Yeah, it was. And then, then after that, you know, but 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 thank God, you know, that they have someone like the Robinsons and the people, because it, it could have they could have destroyed everything. Well, yeah, I remember when they were talking about putting hotels in, like where the castaways were. Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. You know, and, and now they and, and it took them a long time to build those houses along that top ridge line there. Right, right. That old neighborhood. Yeah, took them a long time. It was um, all that stuff? The Oak, uh, Oak what was it? Uh, the apartments across the street from the high school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that's a lot of freaking apartments right there. 
yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, um, you know, everybody has that not in my backyard mentality, but sometimes you got to put up the fight to keep stuff the way it is. And I'm glad the Robinsons, I, and like you said, I had no idea, you know, they yeah. were doing all, all that stuff. And I'm sure my parents, you know, I'm sure Bruce Sumner, Scott's dad, and, you know, I'm sure they were all aware of that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah, I can ask Scott about that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I can't remember when Scott, when they moved down to Laguna. I know. Oh, well, it was about uh, sixth grade, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I used to, I, my mom, I remember my mom used to take me down to uh, Dover and to the uh, Richfield Station, right? And um, she would drop me off and I'd walk across the, the highway and um, catch a bus and go down to Laguna and get off at the bus stop close to where Scott was living. And then I just walked to his house <clears throat> and spend a weekend there. We, you know, I don't know, maybe go down, yeah, probably just spend the night kind of a thing. And then we'd always go down to Crescent Bay and ride waves and skimboard. I remember I lost this skimboard. It was, you know, you made skimboards back then. You didn't buy them, but um, something really nice that he made. It was a round wood. He got really, really good on it. And Crescent Bay, you know, it's basically a short break. <laughs> yeah, right, right, exactly. Yeah, it's a short break. <laughs> yeah. Well, you didn't you didn't catch very long waves at Crescent Bay. <laughs> they were short and sweet. <laughs> but um, you know, I, I remember falling off. Still, were got covered up with water and, and sand and stuff. You can't you can't see it sometimes. The next thing you know, we're like, what happened to my skateboard? You know. We're going up and down the beach trying to find it. And then finally we look over and here's the skimboard. It's on the rocks. It's like <laughs> it's got big old splinters in it. It's just barely <laughs> hanging together. I mean, it's just trashed. And of course, Scott's like, you owe me a skimboard. <laughs> like, ah. So I can that was kind of a what do you do? Well, I can make you one. Oh, it won't be the same. Yeah, I was. What do you do? <laughs> I wrecked your skin part. <laughs> how, do, how do I repay you to get a new skin part? So, I, I mean, we worked out something. You know, of course, Mr. Sudner being the judge, he had, he had some kind of way out of it, you know. Right, right. So, uh, he was a good mediator. I liked him. Mr. Summer is a pretty cool guy. Yeah, I didn't know him that well. You know, ever since yeah. you know, Scott moved to what would you know? I think I only saw him once or twice. Uh -huh. He yeah, came to my it. house once. He he, he wanted a, a suit to wear. I don't know where he was going through a prom or something, and he knew the Fletchers would have a suit. So, <laughs> so, he, so he came over to our house and we, <laughs> but that was the first time, you know, we, we, we talked to him in years. So oh, yeah, sure. No problem. No, that's, oh. that's too funny. That's too funny. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's a good guy. I, I saw him a while back. He's living down in Laguna still. And uh, he's a real estate guy. And Ann, his sister, She's off doing something. I, I'd run into her every once in a while when I was working at the plant stand. She'd come in and buy plants. But, uh, yeah. Did you ever see that YouTube video uh, I, I did with him? This was, this was all about his time. Uh, who, who, who's that famous promoter in San Francisco? And 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 uh, the one that very first, he's a, Peter Graham, uh, what's it? He's a real famous rock rock promoter, the most famous. Oh, Billy Graham. Billy Graham. Yeah, Billy Graham. Yeah, he he worked yeah. him for for three or four years. Yeah, he worked. Yeah, putting on concerts and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I did a whole whole interview with, with him about what he did and the groups that came and all that. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. 
So yeah, he, yeah, yeah, he had some great stories out there. Mm -hmm. Pretty interesting how we. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <I'm> okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, pretty amazing. Hey, Bob, I haven't seen you in a while. What are you doing? Oh, I fly 747s now. It's like, what? You know, it's, you know, it's just crazy things, you know. It's, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> somebody that, you know, Matt Greer is a, a classic like that. You know, Matt and I were real close. And then after high school, you know, he went to Stanford and then MIT. MIT trans said, we'll, we'll give you a full scholarship if you come to school here. He was going to Stanford. And MIT grabbed him from Stanford and wow. stuck him at MIT. So it is, you know, so he could to say the least, Matt did whatever he was doing, he was doing it really well. And I think he got into the chemical oil uh, business. So, you know, coming up with different formulas to, to, to get stuff out of oil. And, you know, who knows? Who knows? Way over my head. Yeah, you know? yeah. Right, right, right. But uh, the last time I saw him, you know, he was, yeah. Anyway, it, it, it's weird how you can see your friend's age. You know, he looked looked a lot older than what he should have looked like. <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah, all oh, that makes sense. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Me, you know, a lot of people say, "Oh, you look great, Mark." It's, yeah, well, when you live a carefree life, you know, it's <laughs> you have less wrinkles. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I can feel it. Let me tell you, oh, these old bones of mine. I'm getting my pay back for all my fun stuff that I used to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. my, all my near-death experiences. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, that was good. You know, I... I good. I, 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 you know, wait, we... we I'll do it this way. This conversation to, uh, went in unexpected but great ways, you know, because <laughs> I, 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 you know, I, I learned a lot. Let's, let, let's put it that. Yeah. So, and I hope you so did. Tomorrow, tomorrow, let me get it. Tomorrow, I, I, I wanted to talk about your, the, what, 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 salt, what's it called? Salt, salt pines, you know. <laughs> the salt works. Yeah, salt works. Oh, the salt works. Yeah. You know, I got some pictures floating around here. I got to try to dig those out and send them to you. Okay. Yeah. Some great pictures that my dad took up on the bluff, looking down at his operation, and a full view of like the salt works, and then you can actually see um, the dikes and stuff behind it, where it's kind of you know where they cut the water off. And wow. let the water evaporate. So, yes, yeah, so I, I want to know all about that, about your family's history with that. You know, maybe the. Well, well I mean, my, there is no family history with the salt works. I mean, that was completely different. Okay. That was a different operation. We did, we did, you know, that was a different company. My dad actually just had the sand operation across the street, which oh, okay. wasn't really there. He was working off the San Antonio. We can get into that tomorrow, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, uh, oh, cool, yeah. Yeah. But, that, yeah, I'll oh. try to dig those pictures up and send them over to you so you, you have something that you, you can put in your, your chapter, so to speak. Yeah, okay, oh, cool, yeah, my ch yeah chapters. <laughs> chapters. Chapters inside my chapters. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's just another chapter of the book. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, you can have a chapter of childhood friend memories, oh. you know, and then write another book about, you know, well, I Rick's, uh, Rick's, Euro Rick's European tour, you know what I mean? Right. 
Well, I, I, I basically I did that. I have family and friends. So I, I wrote about 450 family and friends. I had one uh, for uh, another one was, you, you know, I love cooking, you know, and, and yes. that's true. well, I wonder where you got that from. Yeah. Oh, so my God. Friends, Your dad was one of the best cooks I ever had. I'll never uh, forget when he when he had green spaghetti. It was green pasta. And I, I, I go, what is this stuff? I forget it was made out of spinach or something. I forget what it was. Yeah. But that was some of the best food I ever put in my mouth. It was so delicious. Well, then I did family and friends with music. So I, I had, you know, I had a chapter on, on, on you, you know, for, you, you, I don't know if you ever saw that I did a chapter on you, but I talked about certain. I don't know. And yeah, yeah. And, and, and then on, on that, I, I also, uh, I, as it, since it was on music, I did all the albums that, that you introduced me to. Like, for, <laughs> for, for example, Linda Ronstead, Frank Zappa, uh, let's say all the all the Rolling Stones uh, was was the Sticky Fingers, you know. Sticky Fingers, yeah. Uh, and and your sister introduced me to Chad and Jeremy. You know the the what was the name of? Oh the right, name? right, Chad and Jeremy. Yeah. So 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 I, I I went through all my all my friends. You know, for like for example, for Nick Roth, he was totally into uh, the the Almond Brothers. You know, then uh -huh. I talked about my time in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Uh, that's why the first time I heard about reggae, and then so then oh, I uh, love Santa Fe. God, what a beautiful place! Yeah, it yeah. is such a peaceful, easy feeling that joint. I I love it out there. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, yeah, I I have about eighty different chapter books. <laughs> oh, good, good. Yeah. Uh -huh. So and and corpus is many many chapters, many books. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I probably have at least two thousand chapters. <laughs> at least. Well, that's good. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Are they all organized? Yeah, well, well, they are. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, oh, I have, literally on on YouTube. If you go to my YouTube channel, all my books are online. You know, you can click to the uh, to the PDF, and I also have them. All, all in uh, audio form. So I have an audio and I have a, a PDF for, for everything that, that I've done. All my poems, wow. I have over like uh, probably 1,500 poems, which I'm now slowly converting them to, to songs. So uh, mm -hmm. all, all, almost everything I've done for the last 40 years, it, it's online. Wow. Hmm. Crazy. Well, I have to do some exploring. Sounds to me like it might take me a while. Yeah, oh, man. oh yeah. Oh, it'll take you a couple of years. And and by then, you know. By well, the how would I find something about me? Oh, family and friends. So, family uh, and friends, okay. Yeah, and family family and friends. Uh, yeah, they're, and, and I have family and friends uh, with uh, music. So, so, so basically, I, I expounded on, on the music. Uh, I, I put in all all the my my favorite songs that you introduced me to in the uh, late sixties, er, early seventies. So, but I still got a bigger list now. Yeah. <laughs> so so you can see why you know when I say about books and you ask me what well, did you ever, you know how many books right. have you ever uh, finished? Uh, well, yeah. Right. <laughs> So I have everything, you know, from uh, hitchhiking from to France to India with, with my surfboard, uh, hitchhiking mm -hmm. from Kenya to South Africa, you know, all 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 my my journeys uh, uh, abroad. <clears throat> then I've written books, kind of like one. What is the West Coast dying? Talking about the homeless problem, you know, and and mm -hmm. the causes the homelessness from from Canada all the way down <clears throat> to. Sure. Uh, to Mexico, you know, what, what was causing all, all those problems and what we can do about it. Conscious politics is another one. Conscious economics. You know, for, for me, a lot of these are simple, uh, yet, you know, uh, humanity, you know, the way we are right now, you know, we can't right. embrace intolerance, you know, uh, 
or tolerance rather, we can't embrace compassion. We, we can't embrace, hey, there's 8 billion people on the face of the planet. Well, they're gonna have 8 billion ways of looking at things because we're all individuals. And, right. and no one's right and no one's wrong. It's just different sides of the Exactly. Story. Yeah. So I, I did stuff like that and uh, uh, yeah, everything from uh, meditation books and, and books, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, about the latest science, you know, I'm I'm writing a book right now on Zoran. I don't know if you've even seen it, uh, Zoran. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know that that's the book on, on quantum mechanics for kids. I, I love that. I love that. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's that's a great way to explain it to somebody who doesn't have a clue. Yeah, exactly. because when. It's it's really hard. You and I, we connect. We know what we're talking about. We we sense it. We feel it. We see it. Um, we live it. It's hard to explain to somebody. And I do all the time. People look at me and go, "Where in the hell are you coming from?" You know, I go, "Well, you know, like you yep. said, right. look at it this way. <laughs> look at it from a different point of view." I mean, it's really hard to explain simplicity. Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. It's simple to, in its infinite form is, you know, life is. It's not what is life. Life is. <laughs> right, you know, right, it's, right. it's just there. You know, I mean, get over it. Quit trying to. You can't see behind you, but you can. You can see where you've been, mm -hmm. and and then that's you know you're always looking forward, but eventually you're gonna come around and see the back of your head. You know, I mean it's. Sort of like that's when you die, when you see your reflection, and who knows? Who knows? Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many times I may have died. You know, I mean, it's uh, it's um, because dying is what being born again. I guess you know it's and that's every breath. It's a, it's a Rick Fletcher chapter. <laughs> And and the way I look at it, every single breath you take is living and dying. You exactly. take a breath in, and someday you're going to uh, breathe out, and you're not going to have another breath. Yeah. Yes. And and, and for me, breathing. that's how simple I think life is. Can you imagine if every single person on the face of this planet, no matter what they were doing, if they were focusing on the power behind the breath, that same power that's keeping you alive is the same power that's keeping the universe alive. Exactly. You know, we, we would have, you know, I, I always say the expression, the wise man <laughs> simply smiles. He has nothing to say and he has nothing to, uh, to prove. People will say that he's stupid. Sure, why not? People will mm -hmm. say that he's wise. Sure, why not? <laughs> I'm sure somebody looks at it that way. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really difficult to. Uh, I, I mean, I've had people look at me and go, "Well, well this isn't funny." Well, you know, why you, why you got that smile on your face? Because you're thinking about something completely different and seeing the situation. Completely different than what that person is, you know, and trying to explain it to them, mm -hmm. you know, I, I I think I've gotten through maybe one, three or four times people on stop what you're doing, stop what you're thinking, and look at it this way, you know, and I, I'd say probably maybe three or four people in my lifetime where, where somebody actually went, oh, yeah, I say so. There's no reason for you to get upset. You know, you've been getting upset your whole life because of this simple little problem that's 
not a problem at all. You know, it's a problem in your head. And it was, story. It's, it's nice to see the feeling. It, it, it makes, brings joy to my heart, you know, when, when you can actually see something like that lifted off of somebody uh -huh. and just go, wow. You know. This yeah. reminds me of a story. I never looked at it that way, you know, and it's, yeah. you know, it could change somebody's life. <laughs> You I were involved in a situation once. It was you, me, and yeah, and 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 John, and Mrs. Andrews. I don't know what we did, but we really <laughs> it probably her. wasn't we, something we, really we were supposed to do. Kicked her off, and and anyway, she was you know scolding at us, and and John and I we had these huge grins, sitting <laughs> grins on your face, yeah. You know, and, and, and she would say, wipe that smile off your face. You know? Yeah, wipe that smirk <laughs> off your face. That smile off your face. And, that, and of course, by that time, you're ready to just bust up rolling laughing. Oh, you know? exactly. <laughs> and you're trying not to do that, you know. <laughs> laughing at a parent's face, yeah. you know. Oh, yeah, that was like doomsday. Oh, jeez. But I kind of learned that a lot in, in my life, it just smile at life, you know, that no matter how intense, everything is temporary, everything, yeah. everything comes and goes. I've uh, been a, a big believer in, um, and it really blows a lot of people's minds when I'll do something where they're going, oh, we're screwed. We can't get out of this. Or this situation is like, it's beyond our control. Um, and I'll, I'll think, uh, you know, we're like, we're out camping or we're doing something, something. It could be going through Home Depot or whatever. But where, listen to a master, you know, seek and ye shall find. They always said that. I guess Jesus has sort of said that a few times. Yeah, he said that. Yeah. Or somebody wrote it down that way. Um, and so I found myself in many situations, even just by myself. You know, it looks like a, uh, I don't know how I'm going to get out of this. It's like, you know, it could be kind of a, I need to do this right now, or something's going to fall, or catch fire, or, you know, whatever, whatever the situation might be. So instead of panicking and running around in the circle, you take a deep breath and, you know, put it into your brain, see, and you shall find. And it's right there in front of you. You just have to open your eyes. And see, you know, and I don't know who taught me that or where it came from, but typically if you do that, and you look around, look around, and it is, it's right, it's right there. You go down and you pick up this little rock and it fits perfect into that little hole that stopped the leak. You know, it's it's the little things like that that really make me just feel really connected. You know, it, the, the answer is right there. Most of the time the answer is right there in front of you. You just have to see. And that's where the synchronicity comes in. That's where the, you know, the, you know, I, I used to call it the pozo-nego effect, you know. You have a positive, and then you have a negative. So what do they do? They spin around this thing called a neutron. Mm -hmm. You know, one can't exist without the other. Uh, right. You know, and it's a trilogy. It's kind of like a little trilogy there. You know, and you've got the good, the bad, and then you got the guy in the middle where it all spins her. And that's you. So you know, you, you you told me you were listening to Alan Watts even in high school, right? Oh, I love Alan Watts. I could listen to Alan Watts all day long. You know, I but I am so uh, surprised. I never uh knew he even had a TV show when I was in high school. Because I would have been all over it. <laughs> oh sure, yeah. Well, oh, he was, no. he was, you know, he was, uh, he was out there because he tried that kind of stuff. You know, I mean, he was, 
what a what a what a tank full of knowledge and, and wisdom and, and just love and you know that he carried and just ex exposed to the world, you know. I mean and laughs about it, you know. <laughs> yeah. You know, he's you know, more it, famous now yes. than ever before. More people have listened or listened to Alan Watts than even when, when he was around. Because because exactly. all, all those YouTube videos, someone had had the patience and the and the kindness to go through all those materials, so all the tapes, and put it online. He's got hundreds, yeah. hundreds of uh, videos out there. Yeah, and they, and and to see him age, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, yeah. his younger is, you know, I mean, but from his younger things. You know about this, and then as you get older, you still know about it, but you know about it so much more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Does yeah. that make sense? You know, oh, you know, oh, okay, yeah, I know this now. Oh, that thing, that changed my life, but it changes your life forever. Right. You know, in twenty years from now, you can say, yeah, it's the same, but it that in itself is a is a ongoing knowledge. Oh. It uh, it changes all the time, but it's the same. Oh, yeah. I, I remember, like, where I am right now when I was 18 years old and my understanding is a, a million times more than I was 18. And yet, I, I, here's how I look at it. I could be studying and, and witnessing and meditating for a trillion years, and after a trillion years, it's a, still a drop of the bucket in, in the turn. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. There's never going to be a moment where you can clap your hands and say, I, I mastered it, you know, never. Right, never. Yeah. And, it, and it's, you're right. I mean, there's a lot of things that I've stopped doing because it's not that I'm really, you know, I might be really good at it, but I can never say I mastered it. Mm -hmm. You know, I like throwing darts. Some of my friends just naturally can hit that bullseye all the time. But I can't. Yeah. You know, I'll have a run sometimes, but it, oh, this isn't going to last. <laughs> and it doesn't, you know, but little things like that. You know, I play darts. I love playing darts with friends, you know, having a beer in the garage. And it's, a, it's a great way to relax. You know who's real good at darts? Bobby Forehand. Remember Bobby Forehand? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. You know, and then oh, it feels, well, yeah, I I'm, I guess I'm coordinated in some ways and some ways I'm not. Because when I would play, well, it, I, mean, I would throw it. I wouldn't even hit the dart board and hit the the, the wall and leave a mark on the wall. wall. Of course, yeah. And, and his dad would come in, you know. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You might I I I I remember I uh I actually went out and got uh uh work for it. He I think probably sold it at like I don't know, one of the outlets, Kmart or something. But it was big enough to where you know like a three by two or something like that. I stuck that up on the wall. And so I said, what do you do that for? I go, that's where my dartboard's going. Well, I don't get you. Oh, <laughs> instead of hitting the wall, you're hitting the corkboard. So mm -hmm. that didn't last. You get it. ended up just sort of falling apart. But he got hit more than the dartboard did. So <laughs> <laughs> anyways. Well, Rick, my friend, shall we uh, continue yeah, this manana? Yeah, 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 manana, yeah. So, Sounds good. Um, and I'll try to dig those pictures up of the uh, back bay there, the salt works. And before the Irvine company came through and said, you're all going to have to leave, <laughs> which was a, a good thing, too, because, um, you know, soon after that, we had that big storm and the wash came down the upper bay there and took out those dikes and stuff. 
that were already dead. Oh, I, so, probably, yeah, I did some research on that. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it was that, and it, it actually caused flooding because those dikes were there. Right. And that's where they were, well, we got to bust these things up, you know, and let the tides come back in and take over what, you know, they had already. <laughs> A lot of acreage there that they had cordoned off. And, you know, <laughs> you know, after, after they left, those things just sort of dried up. Mm -hmm. you know, so you get different kinds of animals. That's a different story. Yeah, we'll talk about that tomorrow. Okay. That's a That's different good. chapter. Different yeah, chapter. Different. All right, Mark. You have a good day. Rick, it's always a pleasure, my friend. Uh-huh. All right. Bro. Love you like a brother. Yeah, likewise. Okay. So, so tomorrow, do you want to still keep it at 1.30 or? Yeah, let's do 1.30. Okay, that, that works good for you? Yep, that works perfect for me, yeah. Okay. 1.30 minute on it. Yeah. Wait. Right, your time. Three thirty right. your time. Your time. Right. But it's three thirty your time? Yeah, three thirty okay. my time, right? Yeah. All right. You're on Texas time. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Rick. I'll talk to you later, buddy. Okay. All right. Talk to you later. All right. Bye. Bye.